Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Dead End Sports Podcast. This is a weekly sports podcast. We like to call it the best couple of hours of your sports week. Thank you for tuning in. I am your host, 12 Kyle. And again, this is the Dead End Sports Podcast. Uh, We've got a lot of stuff to talk about, a lot of time to get through it. And of course, I will not be doing this podcast alone. Joining me first up is the homie BZ430. BZ, what up, though? What up, though? Uh, I'm up here uh, just, you know, doing work, man. Just doing work. Um, Chilling. Up here working on this uh, podcast that can drop box over to me. Okay. For the, is the Mic Still On podcast? And where can people find Is the Mic Still On podcast? You can find it on SoundCloud. You can find it on iTunes. Is it on Google Play? Google Play? Uh, Yeah. Okay, Google Play, and what I'm forgetting, is that it? Google Play, iTunes, SoundCloud, those are three platforms you can find Is The Mic Still On. Okay, and for those who don't know, B, who is on Is The Mic Still On? What is Is The Mic Still On? What is that? It's a podcast, but what is it? It's a podcast. It's pretty much the extension of the Dead End Hip Hop tree. Uh, Of course, you got myself, you got Mike, you got Ralph, you got Ken. You also have Modest Media, and you have Sophie. So, you know, we just talk about pretty much anything that's that you don't see on Dead and Hip Hop. You know, okay. I mean, it might be some current events going on that we might touch on that we know we won't make a video out of and we might talk about it. But for the most part, we talk about relationships, politics, uh, sex, sex, everything, anything, anything, <laughs> adult, anything, video games, if you want to, if something going on, anything. I mean, whatever. It's like fair game on is the mic still on. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay, okay. And also joining us is the homie Ken. Ken, what up, man? What's going on? Chilling, chilling. What's cracking? Just actually came back from spending some time with the kids, with the boys. We were just hanging out for an hour and um, just came back, had a little grub, and got ready for the show. True indeed, true indeed. Same here, man. Just cold cold chilling in my, in my B-boy stance. That's what I'm doing right now. Um, speaking of podcasts, uh, yours truly has a podcast, pretty dope podcast, if I do say so myself. It's called the 12 Kyle Podcast. You can find that on SoundCloud, Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, as well as Google Play. Uh, much like B said, I talk about a little bit of everything, hip hop. I really don't do a lot of sports talk because most of my sports talk is right here, but Nonetheless, um, pretty much anything, uh, dating, relationships, sex, uh, you name it, I got it, 12 Kyle Podcast, check me out. Um, As I mentioned at the top, man, a lot of stuff to talk about. We had a lot of stuff happen in the NFL, uh, where it's always eventful. The NBA is going to kick up uh, here in just a week or so. Uh, In fact, stay tuned. Uh, Next week, we'll be dropping our NBA preview. I'm sure we'll get a little bit of NFL talk in and college talk. Uh, we'll cover whatever breaking news things that happen, you know, this coming week. But um, definitely a couple of people hit us up uh, on Twitter um, asking about the um, the uh, NBA podcast. So we will be doing our NBA preview podcast next week. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, so, yeah, we got Major League Baseball. We got college football. We got the NFL NBA lining up. Uh, so a lot of stuff to talk about. So let's get to it. Um, like I said, a lot of stuff happened this past week, man. Uh, let's start right there. B, what stood out to you as far as college, maybe Major League Baseball and NFL, uh, any particular games or situations? What just what stood out for you? Uh, the fact that Michigan State Spartans <laughs> beat Michigan at the Big House. They didn't want like they last oh, out of the last seven meetings. They won like I think out of the last seven, they won five of them, man. So Michigan, the Spartans football has been owning. Michigan football for the last within the decade, man. And, uh, you know, they owning them in football and in basketball right now. So this is like, you know, I'm a Wolverine football guy, but I'm a, I'm a Spartan basketball guy. So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I was kind of ticked that Michigan lost Michigan Wolverines football lost this past weekend. Um, so yeah, that, that definitely stood out. That was like the seven thirty game. They, it was originally supposed to be the three thirty game, but they, but, uh, they, they bumped it up to prime time, you know, seven thirty that night game. So that was, that right, was right. interesting. And um I think uh I think Clemson Clemson might be for real, man. I think Clemson is really the true number one right now. I, I, I really think this is a I think this is a down year for SEC football. I mean, because really besides oh yeah and LSU. LSU upsetting quietly upset in Florida, which was dope. Mm-hmm. In the swamp. Yeah, in the swamp. So, you know, that was cool. But I don't know. I just feel like SEC is like kind of down because after 
after Alabama, you really have no one else. I mean, yeah, Georgia playing good football over there in the SEC East, but SEC East is kind of garbage this year. So I don't know. This it, is real weird. So, yeah, I think Clemson is the real number one right now. It's a true number one, but, you know, SEC bias. And uh, I, and your and your and your Florida State boys, you, 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 I hate to bring it up, Kyle. Oh man, yeah, your Seminoles, man, your Seminoles t- caught an L from the U, man. Put it up, put up, them, put up them U's, baby. Put them up, put them up, put them up. Damn. <laughs> yeah, they they caught that L, man. So yeah, that's that's what stood out for me this weekend was those three college games. True indeed, true indeed, Ken. What what stood out to you, man? NFL, college, Major League Baseball. What, what stood out to you? As usual, I'm not watching the NFL, so, um, but I do check the scores. Kansas City, obviously, is undefeated, and um, I, I don't believe in them, but I respect the record. Mm-hmm. Um, just like everybody jumped on the Rams bandwagon, and I heard a lot of <laughs> you know, media pundits and Eric Dickerson on, on uh, Undisputed you know, bragging about his Rams, and then they got shellacked. I won't say shellac. They should have won the game from what I heard. Right. Um, but Cooper Cup dropped the football. Um, and I know, Kyle, you, you'll you get into some, some more football stuff. But, yeah, when I looked at the score for the Chiefs game, I was like, man, the Chiefs are tagging the Houston Texans. It was like mm-hmm. 39-20. And then when I um, – I think I finished watching Fear the Walking Dead. It was a Sunday night game, right? Yeah. yeah I think so, yeah. Because we were losing, B and I were losing it in our fantasy football team. We had Hunt and Miller going that night. And um, so, yeah, I looked and checked the score uh, that night. And I was like, damn, Deshaun threw five touchdowns in college. Everett <laughs> Edwards <laughs> mocking Baker Mayfield. Yes, yes. <laughs> hey, you got to be able to take it if you give it, man. So I thought, mm-hmm. I thought that was cool. Yeah, man, Kyle, man, I felt so bad. You know, I'm a Florida State guy. I like Jimbo. Yeah. And when I, I text you, man, I was like, damn, man, Kyle. Just no, I was hurt. It was the worst <laughs> weekend, man, because the Yankees didn't challenge that call. So the Yankees thing happened. That was a hell of a comeback by the Indians, um, yeah. you know, after trailing eight to three. That was that was, that was was great, man. I, I thought that was dope. Um, and now they're going to, to – to a fifth in the side of the game, but but yeah, so I was like, all right, cool. But I kept saying it. Me and my 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 boys, with my my kids, we were sitting there watching, it, and I'm just sitting there thinking, I'm like, y'all cheering way too much. This game is not over. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. lo and behold, they marched down the field and he hit that touchdown, and then that was it. So um, so yeah, that that was it for my sports weekend. Okay. Um, yeah, man, yeah, I, it, it was a, it was a crazy week, man. Um, I guess I should just probably start off at start. Let's start at the bottom. Um, oh, and five, uh, oh, Cleveland man. Browns, 49ers and the New York football giants. I I've been watching football a long time. And I, I, as many of you know, I grew up a giants fan, still a giants fan at heart. I have never – I don't ever remember an 0-5 – even when the Giants – the Giants, I'm going to keep you 100. The Giants sucked in the 70s, in the eight, in the early 80s, too, before you know, Parcells took over. didn't know you were a Giants fan. I don't yes, know I, I missed that. I grew up a Giants fan because my uncle played for the Giants, and uh, he's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, Harry Carson. Shout out to him. And um, so, yeah, I grew up – and, Ken, that explains my deep hate for the Cowboys. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh so yeah so I, I when i moved here i said to atlanta i said i was going to support the local team so i root for the giants and the cow i'm excuse me i root for the <laughs> slip of the tongue i root for the giants and the falcons when the giants and falcons play i root for the giants so uh but my whole family are giants fans so that being said i don't ever recall in my lifetime the giants being 0 five uh this is bad this is really bad uh Odell Beckham Jr. goes down. That was devastating. Uh, you know, seeing him, seeing the injury that he had, and obviously he's had surgery, I think, uh, fractured his ankle. Um, I, I hope for a speedy recovery. I feel bad for Odell Beckham Jr. because we talked about it at the beginning of the season that Odell was, you know, he he had contemplating sit, he had contemplated sitting out because, you know, he wanted to be – he wanted a guaranteed contract. He wanted more money. And this is why these guys sit out because of 
you know, injuries like this. And, you know, the way if you saw the replay, the way that he landed, he's really lucky that he didn't tear up his knee. Um, you know, I mean, breaking your ankle isn't any much better, but, you know, you, you don't want to shred up your knee. And he really could have the way that he fell. And, and I felt bad for him. Um, and it's crazy that the Giants lost him and Brandon Marshall to season ending injuries. Uh, and I think Sterling Shepard injured his ankle as well. So their top, I've never seen a weekend where you lose your top three receivers at the same time. So 0 and 5 teams, uh, you know, I don't know when the Giants are going to win. The Browns and the 49ers will probably win a game at some point, but it's really, really bad. Uh, speaking of bad, JJ Watt, um, you know, one of the greatest players in the league at this point. Guy just can't stay healthy. Now, one of my friends texted me and said J.J. White was the Derrick Rose of the NFL. I'm not going to go that far. Um, but J.J. White has been. There's something there, though. You think so? No, nah, come on, Ken. J.J. White's the best t- player in the game defensively. I mean, when he's healthy, he just hasn't been there, healthy. There you go. There you go. There you go. <laughs> no, nah, but, but Ken, you know. Hey, bro, what White, up, man? Just, yo, what it do? What it do? What it do? But, Ken, you know J.J. Watt played more seasons than Derrick Rose at a higher level. Let's be honest. I guess if you figure in the MVP talk, I guess. that's what Maybe that's where he was going, but he texted yeah, me. Yeah, like, the MVP man. year. He was like, man, J.J. Watt is the Derrick Rose of the NFL. I was like, nah, dog, you can't say that. Yes, um, <laughs> uh, Ken, speaking of fantasy points, uh, Carson Wentz came through for your boy. I- I've been struggling in fantasy football this year. Uh Carson Wentz got me 42 points. I don't know what the hell happened in that game, but he got me 42 points. So I'm happy about that. Um, what else happened over the weekend? As Ken mentioned, man, I'm a, you guys know I'm a huge Yankees fan. Uh, to lose that game uh, the way that we did game, what was it, game two, um, in Cleveland, being up eight to three, uh, having a five run lead, Joe Girardi. Seeing a batter get hit by a ball and not challenging it uh, is just beyond me. He doesn't challenge it. The guy gets advances the first base. The next batter up hits a grand slam, cuts the eight run. Excuse me, cuts the five run lead to four, and subsequently the Indians rally. Uh, they you know they go up two zero on us. We come to the Bronx, take two in the Bronx, and now at the time of this recording, tomorrow night is Game Five. All of the marbles on the table. We'll see what happens. I think Joe Girardi is going to get fired. I'm not saying that he should, but I think he's going to get fired. Really? Um, yeah, man. People, people in New York are tired of Joe Girardi, man. They just, I, I like Joe personally. I like him, but I, he he constantly makes mistakes. I mean, like you. Here's the thing in baseball, with because you have the opportunity to review things, I think you should, you know. And he he didn't even and his explanation for not reviewing it actually made it worse he was just like he didn't want to interrupt the rhythm i'm like what man come on man you <laughs> review it and see what i mean it's not like you lose a challenge or something you know so um that stood out in college uh like b said uh what you guys failed to mention was and i kind of feel bad for michigan michigan did lose to michigan state but they also lost their starting quarterback uh he oh, broke wow. three vertebrae in his lower back so he's out for the season and with i think so you still be you guys still have who Penn State and Ohio State on the schedule? Uh, that's two L's right there. Uh, so this was a season that I think I'd said in the beginning that I thought can that, he walk like three? I'm thinking about three vertebrae. Yeah, he's he's walking, but he's out he's out for the season. Um, and I think this is in his, his lower back too. So pay these guys, man. Um, God. I know, right? <laughs> So uh, that was that was tough to see, uh, but it was. But actually, the game was actually really good, especially when it started raining. Uh, I thought it was a good game. Uh, I was very surprised to see Iowa State go into Norman, Oklahoma, and beat the Oklahoma Sooners. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they were like a thirty-something point underdog or something, and to go in there and beat them the way that they did, man, was incredible. Um, that was a great game. Uh, Florida, Florida State, Miami. <sighs> I'm a Florida State fan, man. That game was tough. Can't can text me, and I was, man. I was just, I was over here drowning in my damn sorrows, man. I, I just, it was, it was hard to watch Ken because I knew when we scored that it was a lot of time left on the clock, and I was like, they're gonna drive down the field and score. Man, FIFA and I just, was happy. 
I mean, I just, I mean, he should be happy. Miami sucked for the last seven years. So, I mean, we've owned Miami. So, you know, I, and you know, it's, here's the thing, and I'll wrap this up. Here's the thing that bothered me the most about that loss. It wasn't about the fact that I lost, that my team lost. It's the fact that I'm friends with a bunch of Miami Hurricane fans. Mm. And I have not heard from these busters for years. Now, all of a sudden, dudes start texting me. Man, one of my boys called me Saturday morning. You know we go kick y'all out. I'm like, yeah, whatever. So, nonetheless, you know, it was a rough, rough weekend for your boy. But um, good, good football, you know, decent baseball. Uh, it was good stuff to watch. And, um, you know, it, it was uh, went, by, went by relatively quick, man. But, uh, oh, last, last but not least, Leonard Fournette. Woo. Right. Who 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 saw that coming? Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars go into Pittsburgh and slap the Pittsburgh Steelers. Man, oh nobody, my God. nobody's talking about Leonard Fournette, and I think that's a shame. Like when I listen to these shows and look at these sites, and nobody's talking about Leonard Fournette, and I'm like, w- why not? Like this dude is looking like he is the real deal. You know what's bad, Kent? At the end of the like fourth quarter, the game was already decided, really, but the Steelers weren't really trying to tackle him. <laughs> it was it was some dudes that was kind of like they weren't really running up to the line trying to hit him. I you know mean, why? he was bringing it. Um, God, what is that guy? There was a, 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 a running back, and they did a um, – a football life about him and he said he said when you hit him he said after a while they wouldn't want to uh try to tackle anymore mm-hmm. what is that guy's name jesus he, he can't walk anymore his legs are bad. Ooh, earl campbell earl campbell yes sir. earl campbell yes, said sir. that he said yeah he said he he seeks out the the dbs and the people trying to tackle him he said about the fourth quarter mm-hmm. he said they yeah. don't want to try they don't want to tackle don't anymore want, they don't want no no parts of that action they don't want none of that smoke. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, man, Aaron freaking Rodgers. Jesus. This dude, I, I don't know why he's, quote, unquote, struggled against the Falcons, but he is literally carrying this Green Bay team. Now, they they were able to get some production from the running game out of the rookie that they played this, year, this, uh, this past weekend. But, man, he was literally – Carrying that team, man. That last drive, and it's interesting. If you watch that Cowboys Packers game, you know that. And I saw some people talking about it on Twitter. They said, "Well, you know, maybe Dallas scored too soon." He gets the ball back with a minute left, and I think he only had like one timeout. And people don't really give Aaron Rodgers a lot of credit for his athleticism, man. But that 18 yard run that he had was impressive. He throws the fade to uh, Adams, which is a miracle that Adams is even playing after that vicious uh, concussion he had a couple of weeks ago. They miss it on one play. He comes back. The next play runs the same pass pattern, same play. Rodgers hits him on a money ball game. Um, I will say this, and I've said this before. Aaron Rodgers may not end up with as many rings as Tom Brady, but Aaron Rodgers is far better the quarterback than Tom Brady is. Far better. Both are going to the Hall of Fame, but for my money, Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback of his generation, period, and I don't think it's that that close. Again, Brady's going to have more rings. Rodgers may not even get another ring, but he he is by far, in my opinion, the greatest of his generation. Uh, before we move on, man, we got to get FIFA. FIFA, what was your uh, your take? Anything that stood out to you as far as the NFL, college, or Major League Baseball? I was watching that Bama uh, Texas A and M game, mm-hmm. and I thought it was so crazy how uh, number uh, player number twelve scored the twelve point on a safety for them. And, you know, Texas A&M, like, fancies themselves as the 12th man. Like, they got the whole 12th man around their ring and everything. So, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, man, Miami. We finally beat FSU. <laughs> uh, it's been freaking forever. And, and that finally happened. So, great for us. Uh, what else happened in college? Oh, um, what, 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 what? Uh, Daquan, who, who, the running back for uh, Penn State. What's his name? Uh, Saquon, Saquon Barkley. Barkley. Mm-hmm. Man, that dude right there. He had a slow first half, came back in the second half. Yo, this guy, he 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 he's the Heisman. It like it there's nobody else. It he he's the guy. Just give it to him right now. What he's able to do, like he's a little bit of Barry, a little bit of Shady. Uh uh every elusive Warwick Dunn, every elusive back that you've ever watched, and, and especially in college, 
he is that guy. Um, in the NFL, all of the injuries, so that's where I kind of came in. So, you know, I heard you guys talking about J.J. Watt, obviously Odell. Um, so some big names went down. <clears throat> big Ben, five picks? Like, <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> Come on, you you like like that's not supposed to happen. I understand, you know, and, and I saw his quote that he said he's a he's a gunfighter and he, and he just lost in a gunfight. But damn, bro, like you like five picks though, like I, I don't know, I don't know. They they need they need to turn that around. They need everybody needs to get on the same page. There's too much talent in Pittsburgh for them to be looking like that. Um, something else. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers. You touched on it, uh, and I agree with you, Kyle. Man, like this guy, I think he's the best quarterback I've ever seen play. Um, and, and you know, it, it, and I was watching the game with my homie and I was telling him, it's not, it, you could see the difference in just everything that, that, that he does versus anything else. Another quarterback does. And that same game, that Prescott was rolling to his left and mm. threw back right. And he had Des open for a split second, mm-hmm. but just like every other quarterback, that ball's going to sail on you a little bit. Aaron Rodgers did the same thing, and it's a dart. It, yes. It's ridiculous the type of velocity he can put on the ball from any throwing angle, any position. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He He's by far the best. To me, before him, it, it's always been Dan Marino, and I'll stand behind mm, that. Mm. But, oh, but, boy, you, you preaching now, boy. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's Dan Marino, man, because, look, Dan Marino – is a lot like Aaron Rodgers in the sense that he has that super quick release. He knows where he's going. He could throw off the defense. Obviously, he doesn't have the same athleticism, but he can make every throw, every throw. And, you know, I thought Marino's release was quick. Aaron's is by far the, the quickest. I think he has probably the strongest arm next to Cam Newton if we're talking about going deep in Matt Stafford. But he just has every single throw. He could throw it soft. He could, he could he, man, look, 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 look. We see it. And then on top of everything else, you know what? He's not going to get Brady's rings. Right. But I think he's the most clutch quarterback I've seen. And we talking about, like, anything from, wow. from the throw he had against Dallas last year. Right, to Hail Mary, back to back, back to back, Hail Marys. I I ain't never seen nothing like that, man. You can't tell me another quarterback you done seen something like that from. So uh, until you do, to me, Aaron Rodgers is by far the best quarterback. Um, that's pretty much everything that stood out to me this weekend, football. And you know, the Cowboys would have won that game if the Cowboys didn't have Russell Wilson syndrome. You know, they they you know second and one man just give the ball to Zeke man and let that man do what he do, but no, no. So let, I, so let I, me I let, let, let me let me guess, Ken. Zeke is one of, is on your fantasy team. It don't matter. That's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the point. <laughs> he already had a good day. I see through what he's saying. No, I'm just saying like second and one. It, it would have ate some more time off the clock, even if he didn't get it, and then you can go to the. To the, I think that was the the um the quarter QB keeper, but nah nah they didn't want to do that. That gotta be the get that gotta be that guy, and now they're two and three. Yeah, it's 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 not looking good in Dallas, and, and we're we're gonna um <laughs> that's a perfect segue. Uh, it's back, man. Um, as much as we try to get away from, or well, we think that there's gonna be times where we're not talking about protest and social issues this is you know it's, it's the forefront of the sport so you know if, if for anyone looking for us to quote unquote stick to sports uh this is not the day um as many of you know or probably don't know uh the anthem protest and and everything kind of really took it to the next level wherein just a few weeks ago we had uh owners joining players uh, even an owner like jerry jones of the dallas cowboys um you know, meeting the players on the field and taking a knee prior to the uh, national anthem being played. Um, Jerry Jones has some choice words uh, for his players. Uh, instead of me telling you what Jerry Jones had to say, let's take a listen to Jerry and hear what he had to say, hear it from the horse's mouth. If there's anything that is disrespectful to the flag, then we will not play. Period. We're going to respect the flag, and I'm going to create the perception of it. I uh, know this, that uh, we cannot 
in the NFL in any way give the implication that we are tolerating to disrespecting the flag. We cannot do that. I know the vice president did leave because, in his opinion, the teams were. We know that there is a serious debate in this country about those issues. But there is no question in my mind that the National Football League and the Dallas Cowboys are going to stand up for the flag. So we're clear. You had two defensive players raise their fists at the conclusion of the National Anthem. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I don't know anything at all about that. But uh, if there's anything uh, that is disrespectful to the flag, then we will not play. You understand? Under no circumstances will we, uh, as an organization or as coaches, players, not support and stand and recognize and honor the flag. All right. So Jerry spoke on that. He's basically saying, you know, hey, Dallas Cowboys players will not take a knee. They will stand for the anthem. Um, it's an ultimatum, ultimatum, if you will. Uh, now, as many of you know, the uh, NFL does not have anything in place. The information that they have in place suggests that the players stand and suggests that they face the flag with the helmet in their hands and uh, face the flag. Uh, but there's nothing that says that they have to stand for the flag. But Jerry's saying, hey, if you don't stand for the flag, you will not play. So, B, let me throw it to you. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts on Jerry Jones's ultimatum to his players? No, and it just uh, shows that Jerry was a fraud. And I didn't believe, I, even when he was showing, you know, kneeling with his players, I was calling BS then, and when he when he came out with that statement, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm calling my B, my my BS call was on point because he just proved me right. I'm like Jerry Jones is all about him. He was just all about uh, he of course he he's all about the media. He's all about the camera. Let me go do this before the anthem. Show that I'm with my guys, you know, because the Trump called y'all SOBs. Then you talking about some you on the phone with Trump, and y'all probably just high five and laughing like, yeah, those those n words are gonna listen to you. And they going it's just it's just that slave mentality, man. Like, yeah, y'all better listen to me. Y'all better not, you know, protest. I would have loved if Dak, Zeke, like all the number one top guys just would have kneeled, man. I, I would have loved to see that. It's like what, what you gonna do now? Like, what if the whole team kneel? What you gonna forfeit the game and lose? Not 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 good old Jerry Jones. Um, but I you know, this is another reason for me to hate the Cowboys. I already hated them years and years ago for decades, and then and Jerry Jones always gave me that uh that uh that that slave owner mentality, you know, just the way how, you know Texas, good old Texas boys, Southern racist, whatever. I always got that vibe from Jerry Jones from back in the day, anyway. So, yeah, man, it's it's his comments didn't surprise me at all. It just when I saw the when I when I heard the comments, I was just like, yep, well, it seemed like him kneeling was you know trying to make the media trying to make it seem like, oh look, Jerry Jones is doing it. <laughs> all, right. it's, it's all about he's he is doing something for his guys. BS. He never cared about those guys at all. All he cares about is that bread, that bread, them cowboys, that bread. Oh, did I say bread? Did I say money? <laughs> and that bread. Uh, FIFA, what about you, man? What, what did you, what do you think about Jerry's uh, actions and his words uh, stating that, you know, Dallas, the, the Cowboys players will stand for the anthem? 1,000% would be. I, I want to see the top player. You know what? And not even the whole team, because obviously he's not going to forfeit the game. But I want to see the big three, Zeke, Dak, and Dez, Neil. What's he going to do? Oh, you guys ain't going to play? I bet they play. I bet they play. You know, I, like, I wish that I was on an NFL team just so I can kneel on, 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 on the Cowboys. J -j -j just so. Because here's the thing. You're not, you're not going to suspend me without pay. God, I'll sue the crap out of you. <laughs> I, it's, it's, man, let me not curse on this. Let me, cause, cause for real, man. Like, look, everything B said is a thousand. He didn't give a damn. If you read body language and Jerry Jones' face when he was down on that knee, you could tell he he felt arrogant, just like he always does. Mm -hmm. That that face and that and that and that body language, man. This dude could care less about what we have to go through every single day. He just like B said, he's about his money. He and, and, and you. It, this is it's sad. It's, it's super sad because they have stole the narrative. They're making about anthem protests and we're not going to disrespect the country and this, that or whatever. How about the fact that the country is disrespecting us? How mm -hmm. about the fact that you're disrespecting our right to protest? How about mm -hmm. that? You know, I, 
I, I wish I was on that Cowboys team so I would at least be able to try to speak to Jerry Jones and try to speak some sense into him and then just hey, do F- what I have. Hey, FIFO, you might have to take Dez Bryant place because Dez Bryant, like, you ain't messing up my money. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dez, ain't nobody messing up his bag. Ken, what about you, man? Um, You heard it from the horse's mouth, man. What's your take on it? <laughs> All right. Jerry Jones. Jerry, 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 Jerry. Jerry Jones obviously is canceled. Um, the Cowboys are canceled. I know I picked the Cowboys to win the Super Bowl. I'm taking that back. Dak and Dez won't do a thing um, because they've already said they won't do a thing. So this is easy for Jerry to say this. Dak has already taken the quarterback in stance. Um, Dez already, you know, B already said what Dez said. So he's out. Dak is out. And everybody else has more what, to What lose. about Zeke? You think Zeke might do it? Zeke got enough issues, man. He out there uh, beating up on white women, so he got he got he he can't kneel he can't kneel at all. He need to be standing. He need to be jumping, and running. He need to do whatever he can. Hey, hey they gonna have Zeke out there singing the national anthem. <laughs> 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 Y'all wrong as hell. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, I hear a lot of people say that we should give Jerry Jones the benefit of the doubt because you know he he's a player's guy, you know. But Jerry Jones sees his players as property. Mm-hmm. Jerry Jones treats black players good because. That's how we look at them. The football field is the cotton field for Jerry. And he want to make sure that they're as happy as possible so they don't rebel. Jerry Jones is Nat Turner's slave owner. And he's going to treat (laughs) Nate as as good as possible. I got your back, Nate. I'm going to make sure you're straight. I'm going to take you around. You're going to get some work. But as soon as he don't do anything uh, that he would like, or as soon as he don't turn over that black woman, you know, as soon as he piss off the white man, it's over. And this is what this is. Jerry, they, they, they pissed off the white man. Jerry, Trump, the other owners, the Miami Dolphins owner. Yeah, he can get out of here too. Yeah. Um, all of them, man. This clearly shows the hypocrisy in the NFL. We we saw that they changed the rules low key, so they can have it, so they can start leaking this out. And um, for me, man, my thing is, Jerry Jones is just showing his true colors. Yeah, I, I don't have much else to add. I, I agree. I think um, <clears throat> it, much like we said, you know, a couple weeks ago, Jerry Jones is about Jerry Jones. And he's about, you know, protecting his money and protecting his brand. Uh, and if he has to step on the people that he's he employs to do that, he will do that. No, he don't care about, you know, Zeke. And I mean, he, he cares to some degree because they're they are his wage earners, if you will. But, you know, it's the same guy that hired uh, Greg Hardy and publicly defended Greg Hardy, you know. So that tells you all that you need to know about about Jerry Jones. He doesn't care about these players. He cares about he cares about the Dallas Cowboys, and he said that repeatedly. And you know he's a billionaire, and he he's gotten to that point, you know, by making shrewd business deals. And he's gotten to that point by doing certain doing things a certain way. Uh, you know, forty five has talked to him on the phone, and forty five actually pointed out to him an NFL owner about what the player's manual said. Now, how 45 got a, got a, got a hold of a player's manual, I, don't, I have no idea. But the suggestion, and the NFL is now looking at a way to make it to where teams will make it mandatory that players stand for the anthem. But good luck with that, because if the NFL PA, it, this, keep in mind, this wasn't collectively bargained. So if it wasn't collectively bargained and you try to force players to do it, and you have some rebellion, uh, it's going to be a problem. And it could actually end up in court. 
So we'll see how this plays out. We'll see what happens Sunday. I don't know how much will happen because I don't think the NFL and the the players and the owners plan to meet this week. I think they plan to meet next next week. So there will be a round of football meeting this coming Thursday and Sunday as well as Monday uh, before they actually meet next week. So we'll see how this rolls. Um, hey, Kyle. Go ahead. Before you go on, do you think that if this goes to court, that's the best move for the players? I think it's a good move for the players because ultimately they I think what we're realizing is these players realize that they have a lot more power than they do. Um, We've talked, you know, a lot. And I think we've educated people a lot on the NBA and something we said on, you know, podcasts back, you know, years and years ago about how, you know, LeBron caught flack for the decision. But one of us mentioned about how. LeBron realized how much power he had and his his decision to go to Miami and then the subsequent decisions that these guys have made as far as the NBA free. Now, of course, we're talking about one player in the NBA, but when those guys recognize the player, the, the power that they have, the owners had to acquiesce to the players. So now that so so then we saw things like the bird rights being changed and, you know, contract deals being shortened and, and this this. Supermax deal. All of these things are be are because of things like what LeBron did. So that was some of the fallout, if you will, from him re- realizing and maximizing the, the power that he has. And so, in in answering your question, I think they're going to see that they have some power. How and and where this ends, I'm not really sure. But I think it will kind of shift some of the power back to them, wherein Goodell has a lot of the power. Um, ultimately these players now, yeah, there, there's going to be some guys, no, they can't afford to take a knee or they can't afford to say, okay, well, I'll be okay if, if they cut me or they're not going to cut me. Cause you know, a lot of players on the team are expendable, but there are the few that, you know, who, who aren't. So, you know, like you say, you can't get rid of everybody. Now, if you have everybody unified on a front, you know, then they, they, the owners still have to acquiesce to what it is. And it doesn't matter what Jerry Jones said. It doesn't matter what 45 says. It just, you know, depends on how it comes down. So that's a good question. I'm interested. I'm really, 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 really interested to see how this plays out. Vice President Mike Pence uh, made a guest appearance at the, uh, what is it? It's not the Hoosier Dome. It's the, um, the Indy, Indy in, in Indianapolis. Um, Lucas Oilfield, that's the name of it, um, made a guest appearance. And what I mean by appearance is that he showed up for the game Uh at that particular game, if I'm not mistaken, they're honoring Peyton Manning, retiring his ju- his jersey, going into the Ring of Honor, and I think there's a statue outside the stadium now. Peyton Manning, uh, all time greatest Colt of all time, hands down. And so Mike Pence, who's the former governor of Indiana, wanted to be quote unquote in attendance uh, to celebrate this momentous occasion. Well, Mike Pence um, also had an ulterior motive because. He, <clears throat> under <laughs> under his quote unquote instructions from his leader, if someone quote unquote disrespected the flag, uh, took a knee, or you know shamed the national anthem, Mike Pence was to leave. So shortly after the national anthem was played, twenty three forty niners, no no uh, Indianapolis Colts, uh, the Colts were playing the forty niners. Twenty three forty niners took a knee or showed some type of demonstration. Mike Pence and his wife then subsequently left. Uh, now. It subsequently came out later that they told uh, some reporters, you know, who were traveling with them just to wait outside because they weren't going to be in the stadium long. Uh, So Mike Pence left and went to Las Vegas. Um, So I'm sorry, he went to L.A. He he left from Vegas to go to Indianapolis to the game and then went to L.A. for a fundraiser. And he tweeted out that he left because he felt it was disrespectful of the players taking a knee, so forth and so on. And this was the instructions from. 45. So that being said, this looks and smells like a stink publicity stunt. Ken, what's your take on Mike Pence and his quote unquote disappearing act? <laughs> Mike Pence, the puppet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> man, this actually uh, broke while we, we were recording uh, Sunday. Uh, we didn't get a chance to um, talk about it, but um <laughs> All right, so here's my issue with Mike Pence. Obviously, as everyone has stated, um, this was a clear publicity stunt. 
Um, this was a, a clear move to sway or further um, enhance and, 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 and receive backing from uh, America a- about this issue. Um, this was, I don't agree with the blacks, pretty much. And this is Trump pulling a move on the NFL, and it worked. Um, Pence tweeted, and I'll read the tweet. He said that while everyone is entitled to their opinions, I don't think it's too much to ask NFL players to respect the flag and our national anthem. Well, you know what I don't think is too much to ask, Mike Pence? I don't think it's too much to ask to stop killing people. I don't think it's too much to ask for an end to police brutality, for an end to systematic oppression and institutionalized racism, to treat black people as equal, to to do Mm. a simple policy change, to just something as simple as, I don't know, if, if a cop kills somebody, we'll suspend them without pay or fire them. But you know what? Or, or you know what? They could even just say, we'll look into the issues. But instead of doing that, we have spent a year, a year fighting them, fighting their unwillingness to even address the issue. They have turned this into patriotism. We keep saying it over and over again. And it's a damn shame because we continue to remind them about the racial (laughs) inequality that we're facing in America. And you know what? America has, I have to applaud them. White supremacy has done an an amazing job of of co-opting this. And, and, And we've been tricked. We've been duped. We are trying to fight this 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 trick um, by reminding folks far too often that we're defending our rights to protest. We're trying to make people feel comfortable or let them know that we're not disrespecting the flag. We're trying to appease the master. And I think it's time to stop. I think we need to stop trying to make everybody understand our position. No, it's not about offending the flag or the veterans of this, that, and the other. That's what we continue to say. We're trying to defend a position that we have in this country as American citizens, and we need to stop. We need to stop being on the defensive, and we need to go on the offensive. And it's just time for action. You, my NFL brothers, everyone out there, you have spoken We have heard you. America has heard you. So now I think we need to stop protesting. And I know that may sound crazy, but let's stop protesting and let's start using the influence and the power and the income that you have to improve the communities. If you really, really want to put fear in white supremacy, improve blackness. The scariest thing to white supremacy is, is uh, uh, educated Negroes, influential Negroes, Negroes that can take care of themselves, Negroes that don't need to depend on the system in order to survive. And that's what we need to do. The protests have been great, but we are defending ourselves when we need to just stop it and we need to go on the attack. And, and, and I've, I've come to that decision. I think that's what we need to do. So I think we need to end the protest and we need to start the progress. Hey, I think, I think you're on to something, Ken, because one thing we do know about the NFL, they're, they're not about attacking. They're always on the defensive, always on the defensive. So when, 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 they're, com- when they're met with resistance, they go into panic mode. And I mm-hmm. think if players adapt that mentality, hey, you could see some swift changes in the NFL. Um, FIFA, what about you, man? Uh, Mike Pence, <laughs> he came and went. What, what, what's, your th- what's your take on that? Ken is right. First and foremost, Mike Pence was a puppet because he was instructed to do something. He did it. And the fact of the matter is, is that he still had another engagement in Vegas. So he was going to have to leave the game early. Mm-hmm. So that's part of them controlling the narrative and then putting their message out there and deflecting what the true meaning behind the kneeling is. And let's not forget that kneeling was the 
I, and I think you mentioned this last week, Kyle. Kneeling was the second option. At first, Colin didn't need, He was sitting down. He was like, forget this. You know, kneeling was the compromise to show respect. Kneeling is what a soldier told him is what he should do because when they lose a, a battle, uh, when they lose people in battles, that's how they respect them. That's how they respect the dead. So how, like, how is taking a knee respect disrespecting our American flag? I this whole thing, you know, Ken. I think you made a great point. We we do need to stop the the, the protests because they're changing that narrative. And you're right. We need to own our progress. Like w- now that we're all talking about it, now we've addressed that elephant in the room. What are we doing to stop this? You know what I'm saying? What are, what are we doing to combat the police brutality? Um, and, and here's the thing. I, I think the crazy thing is, is oftentimes these these professional athletes, you know, well, what are you doing in your community? What are you, you know, and we know that Colin Kaepernick is putting actions to his words and to his actions on uh, when he was in the NFL, right? So what more, like, like I, I, I to me, that's always the question. Who's going to emerge as a leader to take this bull by the reins and 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 march it to the into POTUS to POTUS's lawn? Like, who who's going to do that? I know it can be a collective effort, but I, I I just can and 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 this is more so a question for you. Like, how do we how do we galvanize the movement? How do we actually make it move? How do we make way? Because obviously we're talking about it. It's being addressed. We have multiple people on multiple major platforms, smaller platforms like ours. Just everybody's talking about it. But how can we make it do something now? I don't know if we need a leader, but I do think we need something. Like there was something that that Tavis Smiley (laughs) created a long time ago, I think, called the, um, oh, crap. Uh, covenant, I know exactly what you're talking about. The covenant like, yeah. is it the right. covenant for Black America? Um, mm-hmm. Something along those lines, and um, something maybe along along those lines. We we have a lot of people who's engaged, who who wants to see things um, progress and, and and become better, and and maybe Colin could make a call, um, but maybe you know he's doing things his way and maybe it's up to somebody else to reach out to everybody and say let's have a summit and let's come together jay-z beyonce lebron Dwayne wade carmelo the banana boat crew let me just say it a quick <laughs> way um you know cap all michael bennett everybody that has shown interest and that have been vocal about it and the people that haven't and bring these people together and start to really formulate a plan and and put some action behind it. Put a project project manager or, or a product somebody to oversee the whole thing from beginning to end and make sure things are get are getting done. We need to improve the schools. We need to improve the inner cities. What are the different ways we can go do that? Because we have money. Like they have money. So while it's great to hear them yell back at Trump and and Pence and everybody else, the fact of the matter is they don't understand and they don't care. So let's not worry about them anymore. Right. Let's let's focus on us. This is the reason why I asked Kyle if, you know, the NFL the NFL uh PA moving this to the court, to the judicial system. Because remember, now the president is an end all be all. Right. So if we take something like this to the courts, first of all, the the judge has to rule against the NFL because at the end of the day, we have an amendment right to protest and they're going to stand up for us because it, it. I'll put it to you like this. Our system is completely corrupt if this goes to the court and the judges don't stand up for us. First and foremost, that's. At, at, at that point, then I think you, we, we can see something even more major happen. But the court should represent our rights. And second of all, they have to vote against them because it was not bargained. So I think this is going to start to have 
kind of a, a tug of war between the players and the owners. And I think that's what we need to have. And we need to have more players on both sides of the fence. Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Dak Prescott, Cam Newton. You know, to, to, to really stand up and be like, look, this is our right. This is why we're kneeling. This is why we're locking arms. This is why we're doing whatever we're doing because of these inequalities. So I don't know. I just I, I think, I, you know, the whole leader thing, I've always questioned that because history shows that, you know, all of our leaders at some time at some point in time, they get gunned down. Yeah, they get but, taken out. They get taken out. But this is a different time. This is a different time. Everything is real time. And you can no longer hide a lot of stuff that you were able to hide back in the day. Everybody wasn't on the same accord. Now everybody's talking about this. So I I, I think that if it goes to the courts, they have to handle it with kick gloves. And I think, like you said, we have the power. We have the power as consumers, as the actual employees of these NFL organizations, you know, or the contracted, you know, uh, pay contractors, whatever, you know. So so I, I don't know. I think moving it to the courts will be the biggest, best move that can happen. And I think that that's how we that I think that's the best way we address the elephant in the room. I think that will give us our right to protest, but we still need to do something outside of protesting. And I think that's mm-hmm. the thing. And whoever, you know, assumes that mantle or we give it to or whatever you know, it has to come like it shouldn't be. Why? 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 Why is it Al Sharpton? We, oh, you know, <laughs> and and and, and, and like and but but the problem is that you know oh. whoever it is, it has to come from an honest place. B, what about you, man? Your 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 take on Mike Pence and his disappearing act? Uh, yeah. I mean, Ken Ken touched on a lot of great points. <laughs> I mean, I, it was hard to follow up behind that, but you know, he, he's just a puppet. Um, he's a, he's he's Trump's puppet more so more a puppet than a uh, vice president. Um, and sorry, this cost uh, taxpayers eighty eight thousand dollars of wow. of, his, of the taxpayers' money for him to do this. So that that kind of sucks. Um, but yeah, I mean the the whole thing. I I kind of thought it was a little a stunt from the get go anyway. So I I had a feeling this was a stunt. And Trump gonna go on Twitter, of course. Of course, Trump gonna tweet tweet of like he always does, and <laughs> saying the whole thing is not a stunt and. It, yeah, it was a freaking stunt, and they and they picked the perfect game to do this on the, the game that's supposed to be honored by, by Peyton Manning, and you want to take that away from Peyton Manning. And that and that that was one game where you know you were going to see players take because if if nobody else was going to show anything for the anthem, you know it was going to be the Forty ers because they've been be consistent part, with it. Right. So you're right. Right. Out of all the games, you know, what I'm saying? it's like you know you know that was going to happen. So that all that was just a stunt, man. It was he just a puppet, man. It's it's. They they talking about players disrespecting the flag. Hell, the president and that administration has been disrespecting the flag ever since he took oath in the office. So, yeah, man, it's just it's mm. I, this is a joke. This whole administration has just been a joke. This is what happens, man. When when you when you when you elect a clown, you get a circus. Exactly. The administration That's circus. my motto. So, yeah, man, it, it, it's crazy. But yeah, that whole that whole Pence thing set up from the get go. It was all. It was not no quote unquote coincidence you know what I'm saying it was all that was all the, a part of Trump's plan part of administration plan and just a way for them to kind of divide the country more and define and divide people more man that's mm-hmm. all why you got Charlottesville you got this crap going on in Charlottesville but you right. were in, in, in Puerto Rico folks in Puerto Rico still dying and suffering but you worry about some damn NFL game a protest of players who, who, who believes in inequality to police brutality and it goes to disrespecting the flag, but you got so much disrespecting the flag, y'all ain't even taking care of your own people, man. So yeah, get on with that crap. Yeah, I agree. I didn't. I didn't see any tweets about those dudes that showed up in Charlottesville this past weekend, the neo Nazis again. None. Um, none. None. I didn't, I didn't see one tweet, but I saw. I saw a tweet with you know with those him. are fine people. Kyle oh, yeah, oh, I right? forgot. I forgot it was a fine. Those people. are fine people. <laughs> <laughs> hey, FIFO, I, I got a que- I got an answer maybe to a little bit of what you asked a little earlier. Um, I just saw something that popped up. Malcolm Jenkins uh, for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, he said that the anthem policy will not deter players from doing what from, quote unquote, doing what's right. And I'll read you what he said. He said, um, because Roger Goodell sent a letter to the players that stated, quote, everyone should stand for the national anthem. The operative word being should. Um, Malcolm Jenkins said, and I quote, I think we've seen over the last year that you can take a player out of the league, you can threaten to do whatever you want to do, but it's not going to deter players from doing what's right or doing what they believe is what's right. 
Uh, you might be able to change the manner in which it looks, but I don't see players stopping their pursuit of justice or equality, close quote. So it sounds to me like maybe this is, you know, kind of touching on what Ken said that, well, it, where it may not be taking a knee, they're going to find other ways to do it. Um, he doesn't, you know, go into detail as to what exactly they're going to do. But uh, Malcolm Jenkins is one of the NFL players that's definitely been on the f- forefront front of all of this. And um, so it'll be interesting to see what happens and how it goes about. Uh, I know he, he's he been in, in the middle of a lot of this stuff, too, as well. Uh, very, very well, well spoken and, and someone who I think uh, can help that leadership as far as the players go. Um, the only thing I want to piggyback on what Ken said uh, as far as Pence's uh, um, <laughs> disappearing act was uh, I, I found it interesting that reporters made their way to Eric Reed. Uh, and I'll read to you what Eric Reed said. And Eric Reed has been, he was the brother that kneeled with Callan Kaepernick last year. Um, he said, my honest reaction, uh, does anybody know the last time he's been to, when he said he's, meaning uh, Pence, he's been to a football game. With that being said, he tweeted out a three-year-old photo of him at a Colts game. So with the information that I have, the last time he was at a Colts game was three years ago. So this looks like a PR stunt to me. He knew our team has the most players that protest. He knew that we were probably going to do it again. This is what systematic oppression looks like. A man with power comes to the game, tweets a couple of things out, and leaves the game without a without an attempt to th- with with an attempt, excuse me, to thwart our efforts. Based on the information I have, that's the the assumption that I've made. And he made these comments uh, right after the game. So. I thought that was beautiful that even in, you know, Pence trying to steal their thunder, here it is someone who, uh, you know, eloquently stated exactly. I mean, he came with receipts. <laughs> he came with receipts. And he also said that, you know, his message is and their message has always been clear. This is what it's about. It's about, you know, equal rights. It's about, you know, police brutality. It's like it doesn't have anything to do with the flag. And he went on to talk about, you know, members of his family being in the military and, and him not dis- disrespecting the military or the flag. Um, so I think guys like Malcolm Jenkins and Eric Reed uh, for the 49ers, I think those guys can help kind of lead this push. And like you said, Ken, while we may not know what the next move is going to be, I think having those kind of guys in, in leadership positions definitely helps because they have an idea as to where they want to go. I think they're about, you know, kind of mobilizing the people and the players and then kind of seeing from there uh, what will be next. Um, as far as protest, uh, another thing that happened, uh, Jamel Hill, uh, our friend Jamel Hill from ESPN, uh, was subsequently, after she sent out some tweets this past Sunday, was suspended by her employer, ESPN. Um, as you all know, a couple, maybe about a month or so ago, uh, she tweeted out, uh, you know, that Donald Trump was a white supremacist. And while she did, while nothing did not happen to her, I'm assuming that she was reprimanded. uh, But ESPN uh, suspended her after she tweeted on Sunday, basically asking Cowboys fans as well as NFL fans to boycott Jerry Jones's advertisers. And I'll read you some of the quotes. She said, no, I think the Cowboys fans are the paying customers need to pick up this fight. Don't look to Dez or Dak to do it. You do it. Don't ask Daz, Dak, or any other Cowboys to protest. A more powerful statement is if you stop watching and buying their merchandise. If the rationale behind Jerry Jones' stance is that he keeps fan base happy, make him see that he has underestimated how all of his fan base feels. Or how about not uh, patronizing the advertisers who support the Cowboys? You can do that, right? You can watch and do that. Uh, she said, this play always works. Chains happens when advertisers are impacted. If you feel strongly about Jerry Jones' statements, boycott his advertisers. If you reject, if you strongly reject what Jerry Jones says, the key is his advertisers. Don't place the burden solely on the players. So in essence, she said, you know, hey, hit him in the pocket. And ESPN subsequently said Jamel Hill has been suspended for two weeks for a second violation of our social media guidelines. She previously acknowledged letting down her colleagues with an impulsive tweet in the aftermath of all the employees were reminded of how individual tweets may reflect negatively on ESPN and such actions will have consequences 
Hence the decision. Close quote. All right, man. Um, so the tweet got her in trouble, or the, these series of tweets got her in trouble. Um, let's start right there. FIFO, man, what, what, what's your take on it? Uh, was ESPN right or wrong, or what do you stand on this? You know, I, I think as, as a business entity, I understand where ESPN is coming from, um, especially since they didn't suspend her for her first one because that was definitely impulsive this one was it but it's kind of like she tweets that then it makes it seem like that's the the sentiment of the entire company and you can't really have that you know that's that's just not a good look for business so i get it from their perspective but at the end of the day you know i i feel jamel i, I don't think jamel was wrong at all at all so she i think it j- just like the NFL players, man, they have the right to protest. She has the right to say what she wants. But at the end of the day, she's a public figure that represents a bigger entity. So if that's the way that they want to handle the situation, I can't necessarily blame them because politics and sensitive topics is just not a good look for business. So I get it. I get it. But I, I don't know, man. This, this this is dicey. But obviously, I'm on the side of Jamal Hill. Okay. Okay. B, what about you, man? Uh, Jamel versus ESPN, man. How, how do you see this? What's, what's your take on it? Well, it, but people would be so up in arms when, 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 when the truth start coming out, ain't they? <laughs> they one thing. That's what girl, a girl was, is, I mean, she's speaking nothing but facts, you know what I'm saying? So you can't get mad at facts. And it's not like she's saying this on the ESPN. Like, it's not like she's saying this on sports center at six. She's saying this on her own personal account. So you know, I'm I'm with I'm with the sister. I'm with I stand with Jamil. I stand with her all the way. Michigan State, Detroit represent. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm I'm with her. So I'm glad she, you know, for the second time, speak what she feel. And and, and of course, you know, white folks they they little they little on edge, man. You know the, the you know the, the 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 white you know the white supremacists, the racist white folks. They on edge. They don't like when you speaking truth. They want they want to shut you up from speaking the truth. So Jamil Hill, I'm with you. Indeed, true indeed. What about you, Ken? I stand with the sister, man. I stand with with Jamel. I I got my sister's back. Um, this is another form of of systematic <laughs> oppression, man. Like this is what it looks like. They couldn't make that move the first time because it would have looked bad, and um, so they kind of passed and. Jamel basically kind of gave them a quote unquote reason to do what they wanted to do the first time. That that's mm-hmm. what that's what I thought about this, and um, and it's unfortunate because when you work for 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 someone, and this goes back to what Ralph is saying, like you're you're subject to their rules and their policy. And if this is a policy that they have and they feel like she violated that policy, unfortunately, fortunately, they are within their right to do so, Mm -hmm. no matter how it looks. And it looks bad. Like you're looking at them, you're like, what are you doing? You could find something else to do it for. But this, something that didn't directly affect ESPN like the president thing was probably a little bit more severe. But the Cowboys? <laughs> really? <laughs> America's team. Right. So, nah, that 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 was it it was a reach. It was a reach, but they can hide behind their 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 policy on this and appease the master, appease Trump and everyone else that took offense to it and those people are are happy right now, and I think they also look at Jamel as a problematic Negro right now. And <laughs> the last thing I'll say is this: it's shout out to Michael Michael Smith mm-hmm. for um, for boycotting. I know a lot of people at ESPN are in a very uncomfortable position right now when you work for someone this is what you have to do and i think it's time for black 
people, it's time for us to get our own own media again. So we won't be subjected to the rules of other people. And we can tell the stories the way they um the way they need to be told and 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 the way that we as a black community can understand it. Like the undefeated shouldn't be part of ESPN. The undefeated should be right. Loved undefeated. a black owned and operated site. So all the brothers and sisters that are there, I, look, it's not in everybody. I understand it. But for those that are willing to jump out and, and take that move and make a move like the athletic, hey, man, you, you got my support. But I think that's one of the things that we need to do to avoid situations like these. Good point. Good point. Um, I Let me start by saying I, I, I definitely support Jamel Hill. I'm a fan of her work, uh, both what she does on TV, her podcast, um, as well as her writing as well. Um, I think I first discovered her uh, years ago from her writing. Um, I think that when I first heard about the tweets that she sent, I'm like, okay, how bad could it be? So I went to her timeline and I looked at the tweets and I'm like, you're, you're telling people to boycott, you know, Jerry Jones, which, you know, and his Cowboys team, which, you know, is part of the NFL, obviously. And the NFL has a huge relationship, obviously with ESPN. Um, I can understand how that could be a conflict of interest. Uh, she was well within her right to say what she said. However, given the fact that she said what she said about Trump, um, I think she probably shouldn't have said it. Um, I will defend her right to say it, but you guys know I've said it on this podcast before, and it's one of my models, and I tell my kids this all the time. Freedom of speech ain't free. It's not. And I mean, in this day and time, it's just not freedom. Yes, yeah, she has freedom of speech. And no, her her Twitter handle says at Jamel Hill. It doesn't say at Jamel Hill ESPN six. It doesn't say at Jamel Hill Sports Center. But, you know, a lot of people recognize her for her, you know, where she works. And I don't now. now here's the, the caveat. None of us are privy to whatever this social media guideline is, given the fact that she skated on the Trump joint. She probably shouldn't have tweeted this. Um, I don't blame what she's saying is true. Yeah, people should, you know, we can't expect fans to take issue with the with the players. I mean, you know, fans actually have the control. Um, but I think where she ran into the problem was because, like you said, Ken, the Trump one really could have gotten her fired. And to be honest, if we're being honest, Jamel Hill and Michael Smith, because they're on the six in the positions that they have in ESPN, because they're big time positions. If this was, if Neil Everett had said this, Neil Everett is the guy from the late, <laughs> the 1, 1 a.m. Sports Center, um, he probably got fired. Uh, if, uh, you know, some, if anybody else other than that that's holding that position would have said that, they probably would have gotten fired. I mean, think about it. The press secretary is the press secretary of the United States was answering questions about Jamel Hill and speaking about Jamel Hill and the leader of the free world, you know, was tweeting about Jamel Hill. So when it gets to that point, I mean, for business wise, I understand what ESPN was. I don't like her being in that position, but yeah, they literally could have fired her for that. Um, but I, I'm with her. I support her. I, my suggestion is I think when she comes back, uh, she probably she's definitely going to be have to be really careful about what she tweets because she doesn't want anything to be misinterpreted. And lastly, I'm going to be honest, Jamel Hill, the more and more that I look at this situation and I'm reading ESPN's statement, Jamel Hill doesn't look like she's a good fit for ESPN. Um, or maybe she's not a good fit for this ESPN because ESPN has changed. And we've seen ESPN change over the period of time. And, I mean, we know that they've laid off a bunch of people and the program has changed and, you know, and they're losing subscribers. And that has nothing to do with, you know, it, it doesn't have anything to do with sports. People like us, we're still going to watch. But, you know, when you're charging people or overcharging people to watch these sports, I mean, 
you know, you you don't have to get these cable packages to watch the NFL on Sundays. You can hell, you can hang out on Twitter. You, <laughs> you can get just about a clip. If you have a popping timeline on Sunday, you can you can see a clip from damn near every game because tweet people are tweeting it. I said that to say this. I don't know that she's necessarily a good fit for ESPN. It, she now she just signed a new deal. And if I'm not mistaken, this deal is paying her seven figures a year. So, you know, Fox is over. Fox is around the corner. I mean, there are other places that may take her talent. I, I'm pretty sure she's not going anywhere. But I mean, when it's time to re up, I wouldn't be surprised if she left, uh, because if they're going to do this and she's going to be confined like this, then, you know, maybe she like you said, Kim, maybe maybe it's time to be somewhere else, somewhere where people will appreciate you. And, you know, while Fox has. You know, a very Fox Entertainment has a very strong tower 45. You know, I, I could see her there. I could really see her or somewhere else. We've seen other talents at ESPN leave, you know, for for other for, for greener pastures, if you will. Um, but she'll be back in two weeks and, um, you know, we'll see how it plays, man. But um, I, 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 I'm definitely rocking with her and um, I'm not watching this show until, you know, she comes back on. So. Yeah, you know, uh, I tweeted B. I was like, damn, do I got to boycott ESPN next? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, in a minute, that's what it's coming to, man, because it's just I'm like, you. you know, I, you know, and, and, and I, like I said, I feel for it because when you look at the tweet, I'm, and I read it a couple of times, like, okay, I, I get it. She probably shouldn't have said it. I mean, but we've all tweeted stuff that we probably shouldn't have tweeted. But the thing is, is that when I tweet something, nobody's tying what I say to my employer because most people don't know where I work. Um, why, why, and, why, why somebody show a uh, tweet a picture of Shannon Sharp holding this back in my <laughs> yeah saying come come to come to uh, Fox Sports like like they death row like come to Fox yeah, Sports yeah I saw that that was that was hilarious oh uh, uh, I missed that one oh I, I got to send it to you, man that thing is funny um so yeah it, it's I mean and again you know we've seen talent we've seen guys like Skip Bayless and you know Cowherd go over to Fox and and that could be possible I mean uh, but again I know she's in a she just she just signed a long term deal, and if I'm not mistaken, this deal is paying her seven figures. So, you know, you don't want to do anything to mess up the bag. I mean, you know, at the end of the day. Um, moving on, man. We we we've been serious uh, for the better part of this podcast, man. Now it's time for some jokes, man. <sighs> so I wake up Monday morning. I'm on my way to work, and I get these alerts. Right, I get this alert on my phone about. A Dolphins coach sniffing a powdery substance. So I see the video and I open up the video and I'm driving. I'm on 285 and I'm like, okay. And then so I turn the music off in my car and it's literally this guy who was a Dolphins coach who I'd never seen before snorting lines of cocaine. <sighs> I could not stop. This whole story is funny. I could not stop laughing. This was hilarious. Uh, so if you missed it, uh, former Dolphins head coach Chris Forrester was uh, relieved of his duties. He resigned after a video surfaced of him uh, snorting lines of cocaine at the, <laughs> at the Dolphins facility. Um, he wrote up a twenty dollar bill. He and this video was record. He recorded himself snorting cocaine, and he sent it to a stripper named I think her name is Kiwana. Um, oh, hey, sister. And Chris Forrester, who happens to be white, um, and she posted, she, he sent her the video and she posted the video on her Facebook and I think Twitter timeline because she, quote unquote, wanted to expose him and the NFL for the injustices that they've had against the players. So in essence, she did this for the culture, man. Uh, she <laughs> put him on blast. <laughs> B, what's your take when you saw the video of this dude snorting cocaine, man? I, I didn't think it was real. Like, you know, like, it, I thought it was just one of those, you know, I guess what you call those type of videos. I don't know. I just thought like it was parody I, or something. Yeah, I, did, I just didn't think it was like for real, for real. So then when I started seeing like, you know, C, uh, 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 CNBC and, and, and all these other CNN, I was like, wait a minute. I'm like, this is real. I was like, oh my God. Like, I thought I was bugging out. But um, he's an offensive line coach. I don't know. Mm-hmm. No, he Not was head. offensive line coach. I think you said, yeah, I think you said head coach, but um, yeah, it was. But um, yeah, man, I, I thought that was crazy, man. I, I, and then when I found out that it was a, a sister that that leaked out the video, 
I was like, oh my god, because you know what? Them be the main ones, man. Them racist ones be, but be quick to be quick to fuck with a black girl, but then be talking shit about them. So, hey, well, yeah, you know man. why, B? You know why, right? You said what again? You know why? Why? He's in love with the Coke. The, the co- <laughs> Yeah, that's why. Hey, look, he is in love with the Coco because he was snorting that thing up in his damn nose. So, yeah, I, I thought it was fake. And the fact that they're going to say, oh, he's snorting some powder like something. We know what that substance is. No one, you're not going to sniff pixie stick sugar up your nose like that. That's going to be that cocaine. That's that white. So, oh um, yeah, I, I just thought it was hilarious. Like I said, at first I thought it was fake. I mean, not fake, but I, just, I was just like, is this really real? But yeah, the more the more reliable reliable sources started coming out with it, and then once that was out, and then Dead in Sports, I was like, wow! I said that's crazy. Then he gonna turn around and resign, but you mess around, you worrying about players kneeling, right? And then that was a Miami <laughs> Dolphins organization talking about something. Well, we want our players to stand. You gotta All be right. like, off and snorting snorting that white. Like y'all got bigger fish to fry than some players, you know, kneeling for for police brutality and inequality in in the in the United States. So. Yeah, man, I just thought it was hilarious. You know, I mean, you know, damn, that's what you get, man. Don't be, don't be, don't be. Why, why would you even post a? Why would you even set your phone up and sh- sh- show yourself snorting cocaine, you idiot? You, you stupid. You're hey, so I don't, dumb. I don't know much about cocaine, but I do know that that's against cocaine protocol to record yourself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like what, what, what part of the game is that, man? Like, like <sighs> come on. Like, please. Like, I remember that was like a no-no. You didn't want nobody to know that you were sniffing. You don't oh, even want anybody, let alone show a video of you snorting. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Man, I can't stop laughing at this story. And you know, it's funny. When I saw the story, man, I actually, I was I was on 285 driving. Over. I wanted to I wanted to do like a conference call with y'all, man. Because I couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> this shit was just funny to me, man. I just... Oh my god! I was sending that video to everybody. I, I posted it on our Dead End Sports account on Twitter. Uh, you should follow at Dead End Sports. I, I just couldn't stop laughing, man. I had so many jokes. Um, FIFO, man, you, you you're from Miami, man. You 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 follow the Dolphins once or twice in your lifetime, man. What, what do you think about this, man? You know, just like pretty much everybody, I, I didn't I didn't think it was real. Like I'm like, nah, man. Like, so you mean to tell me that this offensive line guy? Is over here filming himself snorting a white powder, like that. Just that don't sound right. Like what? Like how often do we see headlines like that? Right? Like, <clears throat> excuse me. Now we know that you know football players, celebrities, athletes. You know, so some of those guys is still on the cocoa. Right. You know, some of those people. So, so, so it's not all that surprising. The surprising part is, is that you're bragging about it. You're filming yourself doing it. And you know what your job is. You're not a rock star. If you're a rock star, you get a pass. You, that that's actually cool. But you doing this right before a, a meeting, and yeah, then, right before he went into the meeting. <laughs> you know, and, and, and then the thing is, is like, I think it it's not necessarily cool, but if the O line was amazing, if you had a you know like a great team, everything's working, and you could still right. manage this, you get some props for that. But, bro, you're on the worst team. <laughs> well, arguably the worst O-line. You have no time to be snorting no damn coke. What the hell is wrong with you? And you know what? This just goes, you know, white people be doing a whole bunch of crazy shit. And, and this <laughs> just goes, I, I think this is part of that white privilege. He don't think that nothing was going to happen to him. He didn't think a black uh, a sister was going to dime him out. You know what I'm saying? Like, he was just going to be out here just snorting all types of coke. Just, 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 just being the worst type of coach he could be, because obviously I don't have to know the man to know that the O line is crappy, right? To know that team is crap, man. Look, th- this right here, this is a joke, man. Uh, uh, what, 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 what did the Dolphins do? Did they finally fire him? Well, actually, he resigned. He he showed up for work. He he actually showed up for work on Monday morning, and when because the story broke, I want to say like late Sunday, probably by the time most of us went to bed, like one o'clock in the morning or something like that. And so I got the news at like six thirty Monday morning. Uh, he actually showed up for work at Dolphins facility, and uh, you know they confronted him, and yeah, he uh, he resigned. Wow. See, like like I I knew it was real when Ed Warder said he called them. And once he identified himself, he hung up the phone. So, like, <laughs> come, on. come on, man. Come on. What are you out here doing, man? 
Yeah, I, I knew it was real because I tweeted it from a verified account. It was a reporter that got hold of it, um, and he tweeted it out. He's a pretty reputable guy, and um, that was it. I I knew it was real. Uh, <laughs> Ken, what, what's your take on on, on Coach Sniff? <laughs> <laughs> I got well, jokes. you know, when you coach Jay Cutler, <laughs> <laughs> I mean. He trying to figure that out. He, he said, I know he don't even coach the quarterback, but he like, man, we got to figure out. If that was me, man, yeah, I would have went to work too. And, and you know, as soon as they showed me the video, I would have taken that to the grave. I was like, that ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that is. I, I think, man, my, my takeaway from, from this whole thing is that, you know, he, 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 likes, he likes his entertainment like, like he likes his, his ice cream, Neapolitan. Sir. <laughs> he liked that white. He liked that black chocolate sister and the uh-huh. pink stuff she got. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Do you, I cannot I know you didn't watch the game. I didn't watch that game either, but at one point in time during the game, the fans started chanting, "We want more." We want meaning Matt Moore. Wow. It's gotten that bad for Jay Cutler, man. Oh, but Jay Cutler was a good fit. Jay Cutler knows the system. <laughs> you know, he's played for Adam Gaze before. At, you know, he had his best year in the Adam Gaze. All this other. It's Jay Cutler was a great fit, and Colin Kaepernick wasn't. Okay. Yeah. yeah well, I, it it would have been tough. It, it would have been tough selling Cap on, you know, the Miami community. I mean, um, you know, but I, but I get it, I, and I totally feel you. I mean, like I said, I had so many jokes for this thing, man. It's, I've never seen such, man. I mean, and then the stories, and as the day went on Monday afternoon, stories started coming out that she was a stripper. I heard one report, and I, none of this wasn't verified. This was just the streets talking, um, that she was pregnant, and he stopped sending her money. <laughs> so I don't know if this if if he got the, this chick pregnant and she was the side chick and because I think this guy is married with kids. Um, I had I had I wasn't able to confirm nor deny that. Um, and you know one of the funniest parts of the video, man, when he said, <laughs> "I want to lick it off your pussy." No. <laughs> yeah. He licked his finger and he said, this is like me. I want to lick it off your pussy. I'm like, damn, is that how y'all get down for real? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, this is in light of all of the heavy stuff that happened, man. This story will go down for, at least for me, one of these stories and one of the funniest NFL stories I've ever heard in my life. Um, Again, I think that's, that's, you know, I'm not really familiar with cocaine protocol, but I think snorting cocaine on camera is probably not something that you want to do. Um, yeah, best of luck to him, man. I, I, I can you marry? I'm married. I don't know how you go. <laughs> you go home and explain to your wife you that you got fired for sending a coke video to a stripper. Who boy, he got a lot of explaining to do. And you know he, you know NFL coaches make make a nice little chunk of change, man. So it's not like he's broke. Um, yes, he is. He snorted it all. <laughs> Couple hundred thou. <laughs> oh, this and I think this guy was one of the highest paid uh, offensive line coaches, so he might be he might be making a million. Oh man, <clears throat> oh that's funny. Um, moving on, let's let's get some quarterback talking before we jump to the NBA. Uh, your boy Cam Newton, man, uh, made some outlandish statements uh, to a female reporter. Uh, he later apologized, issued a video, and I saw people texting and tweeting about whether or not his apology was sincere. Um, <clears throat> but uh, also, with also quarterbacks, I want to talk about as well. Um, the quarterbacks from the same draft, a Big Ben, who, as FIFA mentioned, threw five interceptions in one game. I saw the game; he was awful. Um, and then the other uh, components of that particular draft was. Uh, Eli Manning and Phillip Rivers. They went head to head as the uh, winless Giants went up against the winless Chargers. The Chargers got a win in New York, coming across country, playing a one o'clock game. Um, but obviously, you know, with the Chargers getting their first win, Eli 0 and 5, Ben 
throwing three picks, excuse me, five picks. Um, and again, these guys are all drafted in the same year. And, you know, when you look at their rosters, it does not look like there is a replacement for these players as of yet. Um, Ken, are these quarterbacks washed? Are they done? Is it time for them to retire? Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's time to hang it up, man. Um, you know, we all know about um, Ben has talked about retirement, so he's done. Um, Philip, well, I, everybody except Philip Rivers, because I think Philip Rivers has seven kids. Eight. So, okay, eight. Yeah. <laughs> he needs to keep playing. Right, because <laughs> he got to put the kids to, to school, so he can't quit just yet. Um, Eli, Eli, man, I, I just don't know what's going on with that organization. I, I know Coughlin wasn't the best, but he wasn't this, and and this is what happens when you, well, when you fire a guy and you bring in somebody, and he he can't even get the job anywhere close to done, and he has talent. That's the thing. It's not like he doesn't have anybody. He he has talent. So we expected more from him. But Eli hasn't played good in a long time. So it may be time for him to, to hang it up. Um, as for Cam Newton, man, um, he apologized. His, his apology came across very sincere. Um, the brother just, you know, he just forgot where he was at, man. He just forgot where he was at. And uh, he just let one fly, man. You you you're not in uh, you're not in Alabama. I don't think you can get away with that in Alabama. <laughs> um, but but yeah, man. I think um, you know what? Uh, we we talked about this on on is the mic still on? We were kind of just talking it through with Mike. So you guys mm-hmm. check that out um, tomorrow. Um, really really good conversation. Um, we talked about it for about thirty minutes, um, but. Um, for me, man, it was just like, what are you doing, Cam? You know you can't say stuff like that. And I think for Cam, he continues to move forward. He played well. He got a win, 4-1 and one as a team. He looks like he's healthy, and they're trying to get that thing rolling. For her, her dark pass came out, mm-hmm. and she had to take a leave of absence, and she might be done. So, oh, I didn't know she took a leave of absence. Wow. Yeah. You can't, with the way the world is right now, it would be hard for her to go in that locker room when people, when she has racist or insensitive tweets mm-hmm. um, on her account. And I, I understand it was when she was young and she probably didn't know any better. I, I guess if you want to say that, but whatever. Um, but the fact is that they're there and you're covering um, – a majority uh, black uh, players and the protests and everything is going on. Yeah, she can't go up in that locker room, man. She can't go up in that locker room like that. So she might be done as a beat reporter. She they mm-hmm. may she may come back and it, they may move it past. But um, it's just funny how things turn out, right? <laughs> like <laughs> you know, this whole thing became a big issue and it may it looks like it may impact you. Right. Worse than than Cam. So maybe it wasn't worth it. Good point. Good point. B, what about you, man? Um, give us your thoughts. Uh you don't have to go into detail about Cam because I know you guys addressed it on his mic still on. But uh Cam and then the uh the the big three, if you will, Big Ben, Phillip Rivers, and Eli Manning. Uh is it time for those boys to shut it down? Um you know, if I'm if I'm an owner, GM, or whatever for those three organizations, I'm definitely. Hopefully, you got a QB in the works that you're looking at to kind of you know bring in, uh, rather if it's a rookie or if it's someone you got that's already behind the clipboard. But yeah, it's almost it's about time to start. We well, gotta think. You gotta remember, Ben was already thinking, he was contemplating retirement during his off season, so he was like really really right, close right. to retiring from football after after um, last season. So you know him. Him talking the way he's talking and the way his confidence is shot down and, and the way he's been playing, that's not surprising. Um, yeah, Eli, yeah, I, I just think, look, look, bro, you're you you, you going to go down as the only player to beat Tom Brady twice in Super Bowl. Mm. Yeah, I mean, hang it up. 
You got you got you got your Super Bowl wins. You beat Tom Brady twice. One of them, which was a, a undefeated Tom Brady that tried to go for the perfect season, and you stopped that. So, um, yeah, I, I think they can hang it up. And for Cam, the whole situation, I, I just, I, I when when it first happened, I I didn't look at it like, oh man, like oh what the hell. But it was just the fact that it was from. I think people said this. The fact that it was from Cam. Was just kind of like, dog. You kind of had like a history of doing this. Mm-hmm. If this was the first time, I don't think it would have been blown out that much. But the fact that it was Cam Newton, yeah. But just me personally, I wasn't like, oh man, like that was awful because I knew he meant he came, he meant it from a good place. With this social media world that we're in, nah, bro, that that wasn't the right thing. That wasn't the way to handle that. Um, because we're in sensitive social media. Maybe if he would say that to a woman in ninety four, ninety five. It had been all right. Mm-hmm. But today, with social media, nah, I-, I can see why it got blown up out of proportion. Me, personally, I wouldn't have blown it up like that. But, you know, I'm only one person. True indeed, true indeed. FIFA, what about you? Um, Yeah, man, Cam, that's one of those things that it probably goes to the majority of men's head. And it's just supposed to stay there. It <coughs> <coughs> Again, excuse me. It's not supposed to leave your lips. It's supposed to stay in the brain and that little voice that's in your head. It's it's not supposed to leave your tongue in your lips. And, you know, unfortunately, that's what happened. Um, I don't I, I could be on either side of the fence for Cam, man. Like he, he just he has to understand where he's put himself in terms of social media, in terms of having anything controversial. He has to understand everything needs to be squeaky clean. And like I said, I could be on either side of the fence. I don't think what he did or said was that bad. But at the same time, I think that you have to recognize she's a professional. She's a beat writer. That means that she understand. She should have some understanding of the game. And she should have a, a common knowledge of basic routes. So it shouldn't be funny or whatever, you know, for a girl to talk about routes. It, it, it just, you know, it's not common. I can honestly say that, I, I you know, because I, I know I know guys. I work with guys that don't even understand nuance about football. You know, I be having to break stuff down, so I, right. I, I I get it. But at this, but he's in a work environment, and he has to treat everybody with that level of respect that everybody here knows what they're talking about. Maybe not as much as you, because obviously you are a star quarterback in the NFL. You had have had achieved you know, uh, uh, multiple levels of success. So, you know, maybe we don't know it as much as you, but we know football. And I think he needs to treat it in that manner. And if he did, that wouldn't have came out and we wouldn't be talking about this. But at the end of the day, it did. And, you know, he lost a sponsor. It is what it is. Life will go on. It's not the worst thing um, that he has done or will do. So, I, I, you know, it's just we live in, in, in a society that everything is real time and everybody is sensitive. So something had to be done. And, you know, he, he he's he's catching he's catching flag for it. But I, I put it to you like this. In the next two to three weeks, with everything else that's happening in the NFL, do you think this is really going to be a story? No, so. no, it, it wasn't. To be honest, it, it was it was somewhat of a story. uh Sunday morning, you know, with the with the talking heads, you know, the pregame shows. But after that performance he put on in Detroit, sorry, B. Um, <laughs> oh, what yeah. much it was it was it was about his, you know, what he did on the field because he he balled he balled on Sunday. Um, I, I agree with you guys. I think um, when I heard it, I was like, ooh, you can't say that. Um, and then I thought about, I was like, well, how could he have said it differently? If he had said, you know, it's great to hear a woman. Oh, well, I, you know what? No, if he'd have said it's great to hear you ask that question about routes, I think the minute that he said it's funny, and then he kind of laughed, and I think the thing that he didn't catch was when he started laughing, the whole room still was silent, and where he was trying to make a joke, it the joke didn't go over. He could have kind of doubled back, but he started answering the question. And, you know, if he had thrown a compliment to her or something like that at the end, that might have been cool or that might have been his way of kind of cleaning it up. But he didn't. So 
Yeah, I think you, you live and learn. I, I think his uh, his apology was was perfect. I think he was very sincere. I I hate to hear people, you know, the guy he did a video. He he, he could have issued a written statement. He could have, you know, have a had a prepared statement and, and read it and then not taking any questions. But he, you know, got on his video, his Instagram or whatever like that, posted the message. He's looking at the camera. He looks and see, he's he's being very thoughtful and, and he takes his time with his words, which I think he did not do in the initial press conference. Had he done, he would have never said what he said. Uh, but no, I mean, women, women should be respected. And, you know, I think it's dope having women reporters that know the game and having, you know, it, it's, it's not to me, it's not weird at all or funny at all. But, um, you know, lesson learned. And like you said, FIFO, it's it's. After the performance he put on this past Sunday, it's it's not a story. Um, you know, there there are going to be some that are going to be mad, and he acknowledged the fact that he lost, you know, a sponsor, but he, he also mentioned he lost countless fans, and I think he gets that part of it. So, I think with Cam, if if he does what he's supposed to do, you know, there will be some that will kind of hold this against him, but for the most part, I think he'll be okay. Um, moving on, before we get out of here, let's move over to the NBA. Uh, the NBA, as I mentioned at the top, kicks off next week. Uh, is, I know you guys are pretty familiar that you, you guys were listening pr- pretty for me that the NBA season normally starts uh, right around Halloween, but the season's moved up. Uh, we'll see less back to backs. We discussed that on previous podcasts. Make sure that you come back next week to check out our NBA podcast as we do our preview for the upcoming season. Um, but they're talking about right now is possibly reseeding the playoff teams. Uh, so, you know, we'll have eight teams, what is it, eight teams in each conference uh, make the playoffs. And then they're talking about possibly reseeding once, you know, the round is complete. Um, so I'll start first there with you, FIFO. Um, do you think this will help or hurt the playoffs? I think it'll help. Um, and I was reading, reading an article and Adam Silver was also saying that the, some of the challenges are with an 82 game season, right? It's not a balanced schedule. So if you're going to mm-hmm. go to a top 16, then you should have a balanced schedule, meaning that they would have to add an additional five games to the schedule. Mm. So we're talking about prob- possibly even moving the, the, the season up and moving it, you know, a little like maybe a week or two longer as well to try to accommodate all of those games to have a true one through 16 seating, meaning everybody gets to play everybody about four, three to four times a, a year uh, just to make it fair. Um, me as a basketball fan, more basketball is not a bad thing. Uh, the best 16 teams is not a bad thing. Um, the only negative I can see is the travel. So let's just say if the one in 16 seed, um, was Portland and Miami, right? Like that is, or a first round matchup, that is some major traveling, you know, and, and, but you know, I think now, um, with, with the type of technology and everything that we have, obviously traveling isn't as, um, extreme as it once was. You know, all of these teams have their own private private jets. We don't have you don't have to play back to back games even in the first round. You know, I think you can have a, ge- a, a a day or two off, especially if we're filling it in with other playoff series. So, I you know I think they could definitely make it work. I like the idea. Um, I like the idea of expansion. I like the idea of um, a- expanding the actual. <clears throat> the 82 game season to 87 to accommodate it. I, I I like the 16 game playoff format. I think that's the most fair way to do it. Um, because you're gonna get the best matchups. You're not gonna get anything watered down. And after what we saw last year with sponsorships, with the playoffs being so quick, I don't think it would be as quick with a top 16 top 16 team seeding that is a tongue twister but uh but yeah i for me i'm i'm all go i i like everything adam silver is trying to change with the nba i think he's ahead of the curve um and i and i think the nba is the best ran league right now because they they've kept they've been year round and, and they haven't been known to be year round and, and they just continue to make the right moves in the right direction True indeed. True indeed. What about you, B? Uh, the possibility of reseeding the playoffs. Uh, what's your take on that? Um, I, I guess it'd be a good change of pace, um, I guess. But 
I mean, is this like the excuse of saying, oh, the East is so weak and the West is so strong type of deal? I mean, it's because at one point it was the other way around years ago. So, you know, I, I don't know if they going I don't know if they the reason why they doing that. But, you know, they just want to switch it up and kind of give something different, something different for the fans to look forward to. I mean, I guess I'm cool. I mean, just see how it rolls. And then, I, you know, if, it, if it's cool then stick with it, if not. And just go back to the format that we always known to have. And um, I guess adding games. Uh, uh, to me, the season is already long enough. I loved it when we had like that. It was like a strike season. We had a few days. Ago, I mean, a few years ago where it was like maybe I think they played like 66. Some like the season started on Christmas Day. Perfect. That I, right. I think that would be so killer if the season started on Christmas Day. You, you start off with those like five or six games on Christmas Day. And that's the start of the season. Man, that would be so intense, but it might also include more back to backs because of a shorter season. But I think I think the NBA can space that out, man, to where they won't have as many back to backs. The season was so intense that year when the when the season started on Christmas Day. And man, I think they played what, what 62, 66 games. That I was, so it, yeah, awesome. it was like 60 games, something like that. Yeah, that was tight, man, because it just I felt like the season was like you had a, a, a smaller glimpse of error to make. You couldn't make that much of an error. With, with, with you know you take 20 games off the regular season mm-hmm. that was so intense that was an intense season but just me personally i already think the season is long as heck anyway so adding a few more games yeah not really too much of a huge fan of that i mean yeah i do love basketball but if i already feel like the season is long enough having 82 to 87 games just keep it at 82 or if not if you can find ways to shorten it you shorten it which i know they won't because money tv right. contract all right stuff, you, when money get to talking you know that ain't gonna happen but um yeah, I mean, it's cool with the with the or reseeding of the playoff. I just want to see how it goes and if 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 it's if it's feasible. Kim, what about you? Uh, do you think this will help or hurt the playoffs? Um, I think it could help. I think we would have a good idea of how good teams are, um, in terms of how they match up with the West or the East, and. What I mean by that is that with the unbalanced schedule, teams only play the other team, you know, in, in the opposite conference um, twice. So the stats could be a little bit misleading when you look and say, oh, they're 16 and 5 against the West or 17 and 2 against the East or whatever it is. It makes, it would make it seem like they would dominate, but I think that. By having it a little bit more balanced, it would kind of remove that from the equation and you can get a good idea of, you know, how good a team really is um, versus the the other conference. So I think that that would be kind of cool. And then I think we've, we've all looked at, like, the West for the last, not last year, but the year or two before, where we would have first-round matchups and they would be the equivalent of a, semifinals matchup and we're like wow why do we have to watch this in the first round like we'd rather watch these teams play later on in the playoffs than match up now so I'm interested I'm always interested for new ideas something that will kind of change things up a little bit um and we've seen it one way for so long what's wrong with switching it up you know so I'm, I'm open to the idea yeah, I am too, man. I, and FIFA will touch on something that I, I hadn't really thought about. But if you extend it and you, and, the, and you have to get more games, um, I'm at one point in time, like like B said, I, I really did enjoy that you know shortened season that we had. But basketball, at least for me, I can't speak for anybody else. But basketball is one of the is the only major sport where I'm okay with the season being extended, even if it's only before a couple more games. Because I just enjoy watching basketball that much, and I don't think that the season drags on. I mean, now don't get me wrong. When it gets to March, yeah, we we start chomping at the bit because we know uh, the playoffs are coming. Um, but I really enjoy watching basketball, and this I, I think one of the things that has really happened, especially with the advent of these cable packages and and the way TV works, you normally get a pretty good game on every other night. Like there, and you don't have to have league pass for that. Like between TNT, ESPN, um, NBA TV, sometimes <laughs> there's usually a good game on 
if not every night, every other night. Think about it like this. How many times are we we just kind of chilling and then we'll get it, we'll jump in a group text, hey man, such and such is going off on NBA TV. And then now we're watching that game. Like I might not even be aware that the game is on, but FIFA might say, okay, well, hey, check out such and such on NBA TV. They're balling right now. Um, and I think so I'm okay with it being extended. Um, if you can reseed it and make it even more competitive, uh, I'm I'm okay with that too. I think the NBA, unlike the other leagues, particularly like the NFL, um, the NBA seems to, and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago, they seem to always be one step ahead of the curve as far as, you know, th- where they're going as far as what they think fans might want and what's good for their game. And and I like it. I, I like it a lot. I'm here for it. Um, so if they do it, uh, again, it's just talk, but if they do it, um, I'm cool with it. I'm cool with it. Uh, one other NBA note I wanted to ask real, real quick before we got off here. Uh, Joel Embiid, man, got broke off. Uh, I think it was five years, 148, I think. Um, yeah, am I tripping? Is that too much for Joel Embiid? Nope. Now, here's the thing. Um, Please explain to me why that's cool. Okay, mainly because they have over $60 million in salary cap relief if he doesn't play a certain amount of time in that structured in that deal. So, I, obviously, that's smart. Um, also, let's be honest, right? He's only played 31 games. I heard what Shannon Sharp had to say today. You know, big men typically with back, knee, and feet problems, it doesn't get better. I understand what the history says. But I also understand what my eyes tell me. This is the best big man since Akeem. Uh, and I've been, <laughs> I've been said that. <laughs> hey, hey, I, look, look, look. Ken, Ken can make all of the noises he wants, right? Pull up the receipts. I've been saying Joel Embiid is the real deal for the last three years, especially even before he even stepped foot on the NBA court. I've been saying it. And the, the small glimpse that we saw last year in 31 games, which is barely a third of the season, this man had tremendous impact. We saw that. Yes, he has to stay healthy, but for him, right, healthy is 60-plus games this season. I think that he can double his output. We'll see. And again, because the deal is structured in such a way where they can get salary cap relief if he misses significant time, you have to pay him based off of his potential. That is what the first deal from the rookie deal is is that not what Kyle a couple of uh, uh, topics ago was talking about how the the players have the the power and how they negotiated this type of contracts these type of incentives because I remember a couple of days ago I had somebody on Twitter um talking about oh Gary Harris got four years eighty four million is that too much like what do you expect it wasn't a max contract this is the first contract from his rookie deal. These guys get broke off. It is what it is. And Joel Embiid, when healthy, is he not the best big man in the NBA? I don't know if I take anybody over him. If we're just talking about talent and potential. Carl Anthony Towns. He's the only other guy. And, and, okay. and he signed a max. I gave Maybe. you one. Or, or he's about to sign a max. <laughs> yeah, but he on the court. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. I, I I can't argue that. That's the one thing you have. But you can't also argue the fact that Joel Embiid is that talented. Yeah, I mean, no, he's talented. no, he has. He, he's I gifted. Mean, so, pay, so, 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 what are we paying for? Twenty nine million a year. Twenty nine point five. Mm-hmm. So what? So what? NBA players get paid for, especially off of their first deal. Because look at Wiggins. Wiggins signed a hundred and twenty some dollar max. What the hell has Wiggins done? And he's been on the court. You know what, FIFA? He hasn't signed that deal yet. He's they said that they had reported that he was going to sign it, but he, for whatever reason, he hadn't. He was expected to sign it last week, but he hasn't for whatever reason. He better, he okay, better but, hurry up. But we know that. The but no, but I get table. your point. I get your point. Yeah, the the deal's on the table. It's guaranteed. All he got to do is put his name on it and claim it. But at the end of the day, you pay your basketball players off of the first contract. You pay them based off of potential. Okay. That that that's what you do, and then that second contract is either going to go up or it's going to go way down. That's what happens. That's the nature of the business, whether you like it or not. Joel and B got paid on his potential, got paid on what he can bring when healthy, and if he's not healthy, the the the, the 76ers have salary cap relief. So I I don't I don't see why 
uh, people are, are, are in such a, such an uproar because it, it, I think it's a good deal overall. He is worth the money. Yeah, I guess they felt like they were just taking a you know taking a somewhat gamble of what they felt like is a sure a sure bet. So, right. I mean, I always mess with Q, man. Look, trust the process. If this if this dude plays only if he plays less than thirty one games this season, I'm I'm stamping the Greg Oden Sam Bowie on him. I'm yeah, going. Well, I would far. think. I would hope that he plays. It's, I'm with you. Yeah, if I, he, I if, I'm telling you, if 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 MD plays twenty two games this season. I'm stamping Greg Oden on him fast, and Q don't. I know Q don't like me saying, he, like to hear me say that, but it, it's facts. I'm doing that. You can keep trusting the process if you want to, but if MD plays 20, 20 games, I'm I'm stamping that on him. True indeed, true indeed. Hey, as you you guys know, we always uh, we do this podcast uh, at least once a week. Uh, Ken and B ha- also have the uh, fantasy football podcast that drops on a weekly basis. So make sure that you check out our podcast each week. Uh, now it's time for our final thought. Uh, first up to bat, B, you got the plate. Uh, what's your final thought? I'm, I'm just happy that NBA is starting a week from tonight uh, as we're recording this Tuesday night, October 10th. 2017 um double header starts off next tuesday on tnt good to see chuck and shack and them back um mm-hmm. you know we're gonna have a uh, start off with cleveland at, at, at in boston um so that's gonna be dope um we already know what the drama that ha- happens through during the summer off season with them with, uh, between Kyrie and lebron so they they start the season off you know playing each other and then we have golden state and uh houston rockets you, you got chris paul over there with james harden we're gonna see how that's gonna go and golden state is on on that about to about to do something that that that's pretty tough, man. I think people underrate the fact that it's so hard to repeat when you got everybody gunning at you. So yeah, we 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 on for some. Hey, NBA is back, so I'm just happy, man. I'm just happy that NBA is back. Oh, I'm just happy. I love basketball. Basketball is life. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes, sir. What about you, FIFO? Uh, your final thought. Um. You know, I, I I don't know how much Jerry controls in Jerry World. I'm pre- I'm pretty sure it's a it's a lot. Uh, I want I, I want to ask the Dallas players are, are are they in the sunken place or may, may, maybe they don't know. <laughs> uh, but I have an APB out for all of the uh, top tier talent it, uh, currently signed to the Dallas Cowboys. Man, stay woke. <laughs> like 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 sw- sw- swim your stop drinking the tea. Um, um, stand up for what you know is right, or should I say, kneel for what you know is right? True, indeed, true, indeed. What about you, Ken? Uh, your final thought baseball so far, so good. We got, um, we got a winner takes all tomorrow. And Kyle, you, you, you're you gonna be happy to hear this, man, but I, I like the Yankees' chances. Oh, that, that means we're gonna lose. <laughs> <laughs> Ken's jinxing us. Well, nah, but I, I, I hope Clubber's, so too, man. Yeah, Club, Clubber's going to be a tough out. I think um, uh, that was some great managing by Frank mm-hmm. Francona to to get his ace for for a potential game five on on a, a full uh, full rest. But I wonder about the loss of of Encarnacion. Mm, yes. And they won that game. They won game two where he got hurt but they lost the last two. And um, and I think they're going to need his, his at-bat. And uh, I think he tore some ligaments too, so I, I don't know how much he can help. So um, so I think that that injury could have very well um, have turned the tide of this series, and the Yankees may, may pull this thing off. I always find it surprising. Like, Boston had this incredible season. Chris Sale – was dominating like all year long, and then you get to the playoffs, and these guys can't pitch. Mm-hmm. It, it's it's <laughs> amazing to me. I just don't get it. Um, my my final thought, man, is uh, oh, man, I, I, I first I'll start with an acronym. Uh, cream. Uh, something we used to say back in the nineties. Uh, cash rules everything around me. Cream. Uh, we were given that by the great orator Clifford Smith, aka Method Man. Um. So when I think about cream, man, I got to think about uh, former head coach Gary Anderson of the Oregon State football team. Now, I'm no, I'm pretty sure 99 percent of you don't know who Gary Anderson is. 
Uh, Gary Anderson, as I mentioned, is the former head coach of the uh, uh, Oregon State Beavers. Um, they got off, unfortunately, to a one and five start. Uh, they lost to uh, USC this past weekend, 38 to 10. Um, and then subsequently, uh, he resigned from his position as the head coach. Uh, here's the thing that kind of left me scratching my head. When he resigned, uh, there was no buyout. He was not fired. There was no buyout. And he is leaving on the table $12.7 million. I don't know about him. I don't know about you guys, but there's no way in hell I'm going to leave $12.7 million on the table. Well, Again, there was some stuff going on. I mean, th- there's got to be. I, I, maybe if I, you know what, even if I had $100 million in the bank, there's no way that I'm going to leave $12.7 million on the table. Now, again, he resigned, so there was no buyout. I'm just not leaving money on the table. So the moral of the story, if any of you listening, remember this. Cash rules everything around me. Cream, get the money. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. You cannot leave $12.7 million on the table. I'm assuming Chris Anderson does not have a wife and kids. I'm assuming that Chris Anderson is probably going to get another job somewhere else. All of that being said, never leave money on the table. I don't care how much it is. Thanks again for checking out another edition of the Dead End Sports Podcast. As I mentioned at the top, man, we do this every week, so make sure that you come back and check us out. More importantly, pass the word. Uh, That's going to do it for us, so for B, for Ken, for FIFO, I'm your host, 12 Kyle. We'll catch you guys next week. Peace. Peace. Chip. 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 Chip.